Hello everyone and welcome to a uh, sort of standalone tutorial in which I will be showing you how to create your own personal screensavers. And by screensaver, I mean the real thing, not just a photo slideshow, because those are boring. I'm sorry, photo slideshow people, but, you know, it, it's just, it's a photo, you know. So I'm going to show you how to actually use videos to put on your screensavers to make them amazing. And I know um, screensavers aren't all that used, you know, used all that often anymore now that we don't have uh, CRT monitors and, you know, you don't have a risk of the entire thing bursting into flames if you leave an image up for more than five minutes. But, uh, you know, they're, they're cool, you know, just whenever your monitor kind of goes to sleep, have a little screensaver. And it's really kind of neat if you can personalize it so it's not just the default, like, lines waving around everywhere. Um, it's it's always kind of cool, you know. Someone walks in, and you have like your own custom screensaver going on. It's it's really uh, cool looking. So, anyway, let's go in and get started with this. So, you'll need a couple things. One, you're going to need Format Factory. Two, you're going to need the WG WG Screensaver Creator. So, you know, just search on Google for those. Um, in this case, you know, there you go, WG Screensaver, first link, second link, third link, fourth link, whatever you want. Um, and then the Format Factory, you don't have to use Format Factory if you don't want to. You can use whatever you want, just you have to use something that can convert into a SWF. I keep wanting to say SWV. SWF file, which is a flash file. So if you have another program that you want to use to convert into an SWF file, that's fine. But Format Factory will do that for you. So just download those. And then I've already got both of them right here. So let me bring up both of them actually right now. So Format Factory is what you need to use first. What you're going to do is take a video. And now you have to already have the video pre-made. I'm not going to show you, you know, how to make a video because there's a bajillion different ways. And that's entirely up to you how you want to do it. You know, you could make it in Adobe After Effects, you could just record, like, some gameplay footage or something. Um, whatever you want to do, that's fine. But just have a video ready to use. And then what you're going to want to do is go down here to the SWF option. Click on that. And basically just add the file. So if I add this file right here, you can see right there. And what you're going to want to do, if at all possible, is maximize the output settings to be as high as quality as possible if you want. Um, obviously you don't have to but it's just it's best and there's a lot of options here really. Uh, I mean you can set it for mobile devices too. There's all kinds of different options. I'm not gonna fiddle with it right now because I've already got it rendered out. But you know you set the frame rate, the audio stream if you want to use audio and all that stuff. So that's all here to kind of play around with and get the settings correct. Once you've got the settings set like you want it and you've got all the files added, because I mean you can add more than one file file if you wish to. And you don't have to use just one video. Say if you have like a 15 second video, if you wanted to have just like a montage of all kinds of different games and stuff up there, you could have just like 15 seconds of like 30 different games or something. And just go ahead and put them all in here, render them all out. And then you can add those all into one big screensaver if you want to. I'll show you how to do all that. But just add all the files you want, click OK, and then you'll have all of the files listed here as well. And the reason it's not going ahead and it's just starting the render process now is because you could actually add multiple different versions of different uh, conversions that you want to do. You know, if you wanted to go ahead and convert to uh, uh, MPG or like a GIF or uh, MOV or something else or AVI or whatever you could go ahead and do all of those right here and then you just click click the click the start button and it'll start rendering it out um, I didn't really apply any high fancy settings so it's not going to render it out at very good quality but there it is it's rendered out it's good to go so we'll close that now right here let's remove that you're going to want to want to add all of the files that you want to use. Now, the only files that this thing will accept is four different image types. So you have BMP, JPEG, GIF, and an ICO image. You can use any of those that you want, or you can use a W uh, or SWV flash file. 
So that's the only kind of video file this will accept. The others are just image files. So we'll select this, and then we've got the uh, two files. Now this is just a really, really old, um, let's see, intro that I made a long time ago, which it's playing sound because the video file does have sound. But um, I turned that down because I didn't want that to be playing. So this is, again, this is just like a real old uh, intro video. But what you can do is you can add like four or five, you know, 20 different files here if you want. And if you wanted to have some photos in there, you know, just to kind of make things a little different looking, you know, have a little bit of video, have a little bit of photo, that's fine. You can go ahead and stick them in here too. And what's going to happen is everything that you stick in here is going to be one screensaver, right? So it's just going to be one big screensaver. The transition time is basically how long it takes to sort of fade in from one thing to the next. If you want to have just one thing, that's fine, but the transition time isn't going to matter for just one object. So, you know, if, if you have like three pictures, the transition time between the different pictures would be five seconds, so it would take, you know, five seconds to go from one picture to the next. Uh, right? Yeah. So that's how long that would take. Background color is, of course, exactly what it says. If there isn't, uh, let's, if it's necessary, like for instance for a photo, if the photo doesn't fill up the whole screen, it'll add a background color. But if it's a video, usually those will be scaled to the size of the screen. So that's not going to have a background color. That's, this really only applies to objects that obviously aren't going to fill up the entire screen. And of course, you could set it to fit the whole screen or just the original size. That's up to you. So you can do all of this stuff. You can name the screen saver, all that good stuff. And then if we hit preview, if we hit preview, you can see here's the animation. Now again, this is not, I didn't render this out in the highest possible quality. Uh, the original video is, but I didn't render it out in Format Factory at that high of a quality. So it's a little choppy and stuff. Unfortunately, what I've what I've found is that you 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 want to try to do as high the maximum highest quality because for whatever reason it tends to uh, to reduce the quality a lot whenever it gets into here and it's not just the program the actual screensaver will be uh, the quality will be quite reduced so just keep that in mind I'm not sure why it's giving a white background around the edges I have it set to black the color doesn't seem to matter whoops it's not changing it but that's okay uh, so basically that's about it you just hit the create screensaver button and then what you'll need to do is if you go to control panel and I go to personalize and you go to screensaver you can see screensaver one right there so it'll just add it and you can use that. I've actually got another one which I had added, but I don't know. Yeah, that I deleted that one. So I had like an energy orb thing that I ended up deleting, but uh, I made that in After Effects. I will say um, that that's basically all you have to do. It will just kind of add the uh, the screensaver there to that file there. I think. Let me double check this. But I'm pretty sure that the files are stored in System32, like Windows, and then System32. Is that where these are stored? S for screensaver. I'm not sure, but I know that there's a folder where it stores them, and I'm not entirely sure where that folder is. I've never looked. There it is, right there. Okay, so if you go to Windows System 32, you can it stores the screensavers right there. Uh, actually, if I go up, does it have my energy orb thing up there too? If I go up to E, there's a lot of folder files in this one folder. E. A, B, C, D, E, B, C, D, E, energy, yeah, so there it is, so there's the other screensaver that I made, 
So if you want to give it to, to another person, you can just send them that file. And then there you go. So that's about it to creating your own screensaver. Um, again, just recapping. Uh, you'll need to take a video, convert it into a flash file, and then use this to convert it into the proper format for a screensaver. Which I guess, technically, you could try taking a video and just adding dot scr and sticking it in Windows 32 file, but I'm not sure that that would work. I don't know if there has, it has to be specially formatted. At least in this case, you can put multiple things all in one big uh, section. So anyway, um, aside from that, just make sure that the quality is as high as possible. So whenever it does reduce it a little bit, you'll be fine. Um, and then I will say I had a screensaver that I had put up uh, and I was using, but I deleted it because it was working fine for a while. But then I started to have a couple issues with it where it wouldn't fill the entire screen. It would a it'd actually start creating like a little window that would only fill part of the screen. And sometimes I just would get weird bugs with it. It wouldn't like launch correctly and stuff like that. So just keep in mind that it isn't perfect. Um, most of the screensavers that your computer comes with are kind of like hardwired into the operating system. Uh, so it was actually designed like the operating system came with that stuff already in there. So that was designed by like fancy, really high-paid computer professionals at Windows uh, where they were paid lots of money to make sure that it works correctly. So the default screensavers will always, always work. Ones that are added in like this kind of sometimes will and kind of sometimes won't. It, just don't uh, freak out if you have some bugs with it. You may just have to kind of fiddle with it and kind of play around with seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, so anyway, that's how to create your own screensavers. Hopefully you enjoyed. And, uh, you know, feedbacks, comments, that sort of thing is much appreciated so that I can know what it is I did wrong, if anything. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you all in another video. Thanks for watching.